All right. Well, we are live. What's going on, guys? I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Welcome back to another episode of Lawn Fires, where the fires are hot, the lawns are green, and the questions are in game. Now, I'll admit, we don't really have a fire tonight, so it's not really too hot down here. And there is a reason for that. Um, I really was pressed for time tonight. So for those of you guys who've actually been here for about an hour, I want to apologize. I've been getting really busy with mowing lately, which is a good thing. But it's been putting a wrench on my plans to get on at 6 o'clock and start doing this show. So it's really been, you know, having that, um, having that other hustle going on right now is making it harder for me to come in here and do this uh it's really making it harder for me to come in here and do the show on time so um i don't know what i'm gonna do um i've been thinking about maybe pressing it back to seven o'clock um so that i can have more time but i will admit i probably would have finished a little earlier today if i didn't mess around too much at this lawn because one issue we we've had all week is that for those of you guys who've been in indiana you know that it's been raining non-stop non-stop it's been raining every single day monday tuesday wednesday thursday rain and then today's like the first dry day we had and because of that this lawn was super duper wet and i made the biggest mistake of even attempting to go over this lawn with my john deere it, it just it wasn't smart at all because all in the end i still had to go over it with the snapper and clean everything up and i had it, it was just a mess i mean it was perfect for chopping everything down but because i i went over it multiple times it just kept making the lawn worse and worse and worse and it just it, it kept you know kept it kept help it, it tagged me behind i guess would be the best way to say it so i learned a valuable lesson tonight when in doubt don't use the big mower on a wet lawn it just makes things really messy so anyway I'm in here in the show tonight. Welcome to the show. For those of you who are new, what this is is it's a uh, it's an it's a weekly live stream that I do every Friday night where I answer all of your questions live in real time, usually in front of a bonfire. But again, because I'm pressed for time, we don't have any fire whatsoever. But either way, that's not an excuse for me not to do the show and answer the questions. So, with all that being said, let's get into the questions. All right. Let's see here. Any, you guys always ask some good questions. So real quick, I I do want to ask any of the pros that are on here because I love hearing from you guys, especially since I run my own lawn care business too. And I would like to know from you guys, what is the best technique when it comes to mowing wet overgrown turf? Because I am terrible at it. Any day that I do it on my customer lawns, I don't do it without being there for a good three to four hours, which is what today was. So if you guys have any techniques, I would love to hear it in the comments because one of the things you guys learn from me a lot is I like to learn as I go. So if you have any techniques, I would love to hear them in the comments. I think one guy in here said, wait till it dries. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to, but because it's my customer lawns, I really don't have the luxury of doing that, unfortunately. In fact, she wanted to cut today because family was coming over to see her and she didn't want the lawn to be overgrown. But personally, you know you know what I, I, I want to tell customers like that, especially when they have a thick lawn already. I'm like, honestly, I think they'll like your lawn better uncut than they would if I come tear through it and cut it at this time. You know, that's that's what I think. But hey, customer's always right, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. But yeah, I'm really going to have to consider pushing this back if I can't get on here on time. Ah, boy. I just I got to get I got to get better at getting here on time. All right, let's see what we got here. Hop hops. The other items could be pretty easily formed. The other items could be easily formatted if you are into DIY mixing. Humic kelp is basically what RGS is. Yeah, that's true. Um, Josh Gates, if you were to overseed in the fall and use air rate, how, how do the seeds reach the soils? Well, that's a good question. What I want you to realize is that you don't necessarily have to open the ground up with a mechanical aerator in order to get seed to soil contact. You just need to make sure that you're doing your part and that the seed is touching the, the soil. Now, ideally, that would be on both sides, but we're not always able to get that. 
So if we can at least touch the soil on one side, if we can at least have the seed touching the soil on one side and making sure that we're doing our part and constantly watering it on the daily for, for it to grow, then you'll be fine. It's not so much the fact of aeration because aeration, really the, the purpose of aeration, whether it's mechanical or liquid, is to open the ground up to uh, increase over, to improve overall air, water, and nutrient penetration, right? Not so much to get the seeds down into the soil. So when Alan's, when Alan and I and everybody in the community, when we all say seed to soil contact, when we say seed to soil contact, we mean make sure that it's touching the, make sure that the seed is touching the soil so that it can establish itself. And then from there, it's up to you whether or not you want to do your part and make sure that you keep that soil wet so that the seed can start to root down into it and start to grow. Make sense? All right, the next question is from Kelvin DeLong. How long does it take to mow? Well, it depends on the situation. If it's a dry lawn, knock it out in 30 minutes. But if it's a wet, overgrown lawn like today, it can take well over three hours for me, a rookie. Um, let's see what we got here. Grace Ortis, Hop Hops, what type of, oh, that's not for me. Um, Daniel Mountain, it takes me two days and a half. Oh, that's odd. Um, Hop Hops, I've seen Augustine, this is the first season, I've cared anything for it though. All right, let me, let me scroll down to any of the questions because I'm trying to get caught up. Do you know what's up with Milo? Can't find a single bag wherever I go. Um, Andy, I have no idea what's going on. All I know is that based on the situation and the popularity of the, of the product, they're just having a hard time trying to supply that demand. So, you know, and based on what, I, what I've heard from their article, which I haven't even read yet, um, they're, they're, not re they're not run on price, price and demand. And because of that, it's very hard for them to keep up with the shortage. Um, but all I know is that keep on the lookout for any um, clones or alternatives that you can find that are, um, you know, that are similar to Melorganite, like anything that contains, you know, four, 640, 430, which you'll hear me talking a little bit about um, on this weekend's video where I'm going to be putting down my next round of applications for the LCM Lawn Revival and the Next Step Liquid Lawn Care Program, which we're doing here. And then another video, hopefully coming later this week, where I'm going to be showing you guys the initiation of my test plot. Now, for those of you who've been watching the, the live streams, you guys know that what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be utilizing um, soil test kits, such as the Soil Savvy guys, which I'm really happy to be working with this year. And I'm not going to get super scientific as far as reading it, right? I mean, we'll, we'll probably dive a little bit in there and see what the soil looks like once I get the test back. But the idea being is I'm not looking to improve anything um, long term in the back. All I'm looking to do is a fun little experiment. So we're going to take a test in the three main areas that I plan to apply to before I do the applications. And then after that, we're going to come back and do another test and see what has changed, if anything, right? Especially since all the products I'm going to be putting on there, they're all formulated in their own unique ways. So it's going to be interesting to see how they react and how they nurture those areas of the yard. So if you're somebody that's interested in that, make sure that you're tuned and subscribed to the channel. That should be coming up here within the next week. Um, this is a good one. <laughs> Andy, I don't, I don't want to betray Milo for Ringer. Yes, I hear you, buddy. But if you think about it, for the summertime, uh, Ringer would be a great choice because of the fact that you're actually getting potassium out of there. Uh, because one common problem that we're actually running into with our one common problem that we're running into with, with a lot of lawns across the United States or really anywhere, uh, especially since we've been using the Lorganite for so long, our lawns are just, you know, they're so full of excess phosphorus. So to contribute for that and to balance it out, the best thing to do is to stop applying phosphorus. And a great supplement for that, again, would be the Ringer Lawn Restore, or really anything that just doesn't contain any phosphorus, like the 1801 Green Punch, which is something that I highly recommend because it's available and it works. And if you want to learn a little bit more about it and what I'm going to be doing on my lawn and the test plot, once again, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to see all of that coming up here within the next week. All right. Let's see here. 
How is it growing, Jake? How was your week? Um, pretty good as far as the lawn goes. Been growing nonstop. Like I said, we got four days of nonstop rain, and because of that, it's just really, really wet out there. So that's what that's all about. Benjamin, Benjamin ZBT, have you gotten any Carbon X yet? Looking forward to seeing some results. Got mine on Wednesday. No, I haven't, but it's on the way, so stay tuned. Um, update video, update video on the project lawn coming soon, Josh. Stay tuned. Um, Eric Von Whittle, Jake, I never had seed heads in my Saint Augustine until I started using Milo. Now I get them every May. Best guess why? Thanks. Well, based on what I've been hearing from a lot of my Floridians out there, who are you know who who are very experienced with Saint Augustine grass. That's just a sign of stress that happens in the spring. What I want you to, because one thing I want you to realize is that when you live in the South, you have two different seasons. Number one, you have your rainy season, which goes on all throughout the summer and into the fall. And then you have your dry season, which goes, which goes all the way from the fall through the winter and into spring. So your lawn, so seeds in the lawn, it's just your lawn's way of stressing, especially adapting to the change in the environment. Because what I want you to think about is that your, your St. Augustine lawn is really accustomed to being watered with sewage water. Or, well, not, not sewage water, but it's, it's, used to being watered with, it's used to being watered with your city water that you're often pumping through your irrigation system or your hand sprinkler or your hose or really whatever you're pumping out of. And then all of a sudden, as you're coming into the rainy season, which is going to be about right now, you're going to notice that you're going to notice the seed heads popping up. And the reason that is, is because your lawn, like I said, is accustomed to being watered with that city water. And then all of a sudden it's being watered by that natural rainwater. So it's just a natural sign of stress. Uh, as far as how to cope with it, I really wouldn't worry about it. Uh, the best thing to do really is just to mulch it back into the ground uh, and get those nutrients back into the ground where they can be utilized to help uh, feed further new growth into the future. Now, Another question I'll often get regarding seed heads, because I do get them up here in the north, is going to be, will they produce new grow? Well, to be honest with you, based on what I've heard from some sod growers out there, um, they're not, a lot of the seeds that are made, a lot of the seeds that pop up from your lawn are going to be sterile, so they're not really going to reproduce, but I do recommend that you do but I do recommend that you mulch that down, because the fact that your lawn is seeding, it's an indicator that it's an indicator that the lawn is full of good nutrients and all that good stuff. So you want to mulch that back into the ground where it can be utilized as a food source further into the future. All right. I know I ramble a little bit there, but I want to apologize about that. I really am. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get back into the pace of things because I literally just got back from work like 10 minutes ago. Um, but yeah, that's what that's all about. Let's get back in here. Um, uh, four days. Try two weeks of rain. Oh, man, that's rough, Josh. <laughs> At that point, you have to cut in the rain. Nothing that can be said about it. Grace Ortis, when will you start your neighbor's lawn? Um, what are you talking about, Grace? You're talking about the one I'm doing over there? Because for those of you who've been in here, I'm doing my round two application, uh, which is going to be an organic fertilizer, and it's going to be happening over there. On, uh, it's going to be happening over there on my lawn revival series I'm doing over there. Stay tuned. And then we also have the liquid, um, the liquid lawn care program we're doing over here. So that'll all be coming up this weekend. Um, hey, Jake, Mick Cox asked me to ask the water to grass ratio. Mm, what do you mean by that? Are you asking how much water to put on your lawn? Because if you are, let me just simplify it for you. When it comes to watering your lawn, here's all you have to do. What you do is you take a tuna can and you place that in the middle. Hold on, let me start over. I'm, I'm getting a little I'm getting a little too far into it. So when it comes to watering your lawn, you want to make sure that you're using the right sprinkler. And the sprinkler that I've recommended um, the entirety of the time that I've been in this community um, is going to be the impact sprinkler. You know the one that goes. That's the best way I can do it. But anyway. Those sprinklers, I like them because they can cover a max amount of area in a minimum amount of time. Get that sprinkler and you're going to have to move it around. You're going to have to move it around whether you like it or not. That's just how it is. Um, especially if you're covering a small area, that won't be a problem. But anyway, 
you get that sprinkler and what you do is you set it up in about two to three different zones of the yard depending on how big your lawn is and how long it takes to cover it and then with every zone or every spot that you're covering I want you to take a tuna can or a rain gauge or anything like that and I want you to put it out in the lawn and once you fill that up about halfway or to the half inch mark then you're good to go for your single watering and then you're gonna after that you're gonna want to repeat that um, once or twice more throughout the week depending on the situations you're gonna want to repeat that once or twice a week depending on the situation so if you're getting some rain help here and there um, you want to water twice a week half inch each time so that's going to be about one inch for the week and as far as watering keep them as far apart as possible so every so three to four days apart from each watering would be perfect now if you're in a situation where you're in a drought you're just going to want to add another day or two onto your watering in my case um, just add another so you instead of the two um, the two one inch per week uh, waterings we're going to add on one more so that's another half inch so an inch and a half a week and I typically like to keep my waterings um, about two days apart so Monday Wednesday Friday that's the best way to look at it and then once again three times a week is really ideal that's what I recommend and half inch each time measure that using a tuna can or a rain gauge mm. Andy's lawn care and outdoor adventures we've got five and a half inches of rain since Sunday tons more coming next week yeah man it's it's been rough. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to having a break from the rain so I can actually get some stuff done outside because all week I've been inside. It sucks. Um, what will be your first zero turn? I don't know. I'm not really sure yet. I'm not really looking. I'm just looking to use the tractor this year and see where it gets me, but I would like to get one. A Bonds Prestige Boy. Thanks, Jake. It would be... It would be like a 2 by 4 Phil, appreciate it. Longtime fan. No problem, buddy. Um, glad I could help you. Jake, my first cut was two and a half inches, like you recommended. What do you suggest for the second and third cut? Okay, so, um, I don't know if you watched my video, Jeff, but what I recommend is that you mow your, is that you do your first cut at two and a half, especially if you have bluegrass, and if you have a more rigid, um, tall, wide-bladed grass, like turf-type hill fescue, you want to mow that at about three inches, and what I recommend you do for the next two cuts after that is mow at that two and a half inch cutting height twice more and then after that you can slowly start to rise it up. Now in this case I've already done my three cuts and I'm actually going to be talking about that this weekend. How I'm going to be inching up, how I'm going to slowly start to inch up towards my optimum height for the summer. Which for me because I have bluegrass is going to be three and a half inches and for the LCN lawn revival we're doing over there, it's going to be about four inches because that's turf type tall fescue and it does better at taller heights. Anyway, you hear all about that over the weekend, so stay tuned for that. All right. The attack of wild onions in my yard. Mowing them makes my yard look like it is awesome green. No one knows. <laughs> that's funny. Josh Smith. Which is better, rye or fescue? That's a good question. Because rye and fescue, fescue have very similar characteristics. In fact, they grow in a similar way. They grow via clumps. and They grow in kind of a clumpy form, and then they, they just get fat and wide, and then they spread slowly over time. So as far as which one is better, I can't really tell you. Uh, since I've never you know had a mono stand of fescue or ryegrass but all I can tell you is that they will do good mode together you just have to kind of figure out a compromise as far as how tall to mow it because you do have the the rigid you do have the rigid tall fescue in there and you do have the bluegrass so 3.75 is where I would go good compromise if you're using the two of them but yeah to answer your question uh, fescue or rye they're both good grass types in fact since we live in the north and the grass types look very similar, we can get away with growing them synergistically or together. Because what I want you to think about is that if one grass type goes bad because of one problem that you're dealing with, whether it's excess heat or excess foot traffic or drought, then that other grass type being the fescue might be able to, you know, might be able to help you there. So that's the, that's the benefit of ha having two grasses. So as far as which one is better than the other, if you can get away with having more than one, I would definitely do that. 
That was helpful on the seed heads. I've been seeing them too. Thanks, Jake. No problem, Hop Hops. Glad I could help you. Uh, Anthony J. Barton, any idea on how we can all stop, on how we can stop all this rain we've been getting? The insects are breeding big time, and I think it's going to be an issue. Um, Anthony, that's a great question because one of the most prominent insects we're going to be dealing with here very soon is going to be grub worms. And as far as treatment right now, I really wouldn't worry about it. Because what I want you to think about is that any feeding that they're going to be doing now isn't going to be noticed because the lawns are so vigorous and and strong as can be, right? It's once we get into the it's once we get into the early June time frame when you know the 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 rain starts to go down and we're getting higher temperatures uh, and the lawn is going is starting to head into dormancy. It's getting weak. That's the time where I want to make sure that I get my preventative down and. Another reason I want to do it around that time is going to be because that is when the that's typically when the adult beetles emerge and they lay their their and they lay their eggs and then at that point the larva is going to hatch and they're going to start to feed. So getting a application down of aminocloprid or chloramphene file or however you pronounce that one from Scott's uh, Grub X, if you, you want to make sure that you get that down around that time so that you can have the four months of residual control. Uh, to prevent them from feeding on the lawn uh, later on throughout the year. So as far as treating for the grubs, I would wait till June. Now insecticides, um, if you're noticing any moth activity, it wouldn't be a bad it wouldn't be a bad idea to probably throw in some bifenthrin uh, to help cut that back. But that's that's what I recommend. John Platt, so the Spectracide products are always cheaper than the Bayer products. Is there a quality difference that you are aware of? Uh, John Platt, from experience, nothing I can tell you, but as long as they have the same, I'm sure that as long as they have the same in active ingredients, you should be fine. Jake, my neighbor's lawns are all dandelions. Do I go all Rambo and invade enemy lines with herbicides? Um... That's a good question. Now, I I personally, if I live next to a dandelion lawn, I wouldn't even worry about it because of the fact that I'm dominating them to begin with. All I would focus on is controlling the controllables like Alan talks about, right? Focus on the weeds that are coming in your yard and realize that because it is your yard and it is your land that you can go ahead and treat that problem as soon as you want to. In this case, um, the 240 dicamba would be perfect for that. How many lawns do you mow? Um, right now we're pushing about five or six, but uh, usually as we progress the year, I start to mow about 10 to 12. So that'll be coming up. All right. I cut a 10 acre lawn with a push mower. All right, dude, listen, I don't know whether you're being real or not, but <laughs> I know one person who would talk a lot about that. His name is Greg Chisholm, Geek to Freak Fitness and Lawn Care. Man, I miss that dude. He used to talk a lot about how it's okay to use big, small mowers on bigger properties. God. Nose is itching. I just got back from work. <sighs> anyway. But yeah, Geek to Freak, man. One of my favorite guys. Anyway. <laughs> man, that's crazy. I, I, I would never be able to cut a 10-acre yard with a push mower. I would... Especially if it's this overgrown, I'd, it, that'd be a day project in itself. Just not worth it. Jake, are you going to sell any G JTLK decals? Um, maybe someday. I, I'm I'm working on it. Meme of, memes from Dima. God. How would you say the joules of energy produced by the mover divided by weed whacker plus gas consumption? I'm not even going to answer that because I don't know. I don't know what the heck he just said. Um, Jake reminds me of Chandler from front. <laughs> I love that. That's funny. That's great. <laughs> Matt Perry, man. That's the guy. Daniel T. Davis. Is there such a thing as too much humic? Um, Daniel, not that I know of. Based on what I've been hearing in this community, the more you put down, the better it's going to be. Now, I'm not recommending that you over apply humic, but if you want to experiment, if you want to do that, who am I to tell, who am I to tell you not to? It's only going to help you. Hmm. 
Jake, you must be pretty close to high school graduation. Yeah, literally a year away. Um, Jeff, Jake, when lawn dries out, I'm going to spray mosquito spray. Is it okay to spray after mowing, or will that some or will that something or will that hurt the grass? Maybe Silverback might know. Yeah, Silverback is not here. Um, but either way, if you do decide to mow before a treatment, you should be just fine because you got to remember this is not so much a. Actually, hang on. I don't want to say that because I'm not 100% sure. But either way, all I know is that if you do want to apply after a mow, you should be fine. Uh, braiding 84. What's up, Jake? My yard is a foot tall. <laughs> I'm ready to start baling hay. My yard has jumped out of this world. Going to get all cut up Sunday and throw down some grub control RGS and aerate. You're the man, braiding 84. Get it done. All right, um, Josh Smith, getting my bio stim pack this week. Super pumped. Awesome, dude. Can't wait to see the results. Uh, Tanner Rim, do you have something in your house which is not made of wood? Um, can't say that I do. <laughs> Maybe the flag. Jake needs a man cave like Wyatt's lawn savers in like Wyand's lawn service in his backyard. Go Celtics. What are you interested in after high school? What colleges are major? Well, what I want to do is I want to grow my reach in this industry. And, you know, I want to go to Purdue. I want to get involved with the turf management program. I want to do that. And then, in addition, I want to keep growing my lawn care business. And I want to keep making these YouTube videos. And then eventually, in the long term, I want to go full-time YouTube. That's what I want to do. I want to make a full-time living making YouTube videos about what I love, and that is teaching you guys how to take care of your lawns. I love nothing more than doing that on my free time, and especially when we live in a world now where you can make a living doing, you know, doing your hobby, I'm going to take advantage of that. Have you noticed all the wannabe YouTubers over the last year? Um... Yeah, but I don't really mind them. You should copyright your shoes. <laughs> That's funny. You should copyright your shows. I mean, I don't really see anybody else out there making lawn fire, so I should be okay. Um, SV Contigo. Hey, Jake, what are the downsides to aerating a cool season turf now in addition to the fall? My lawn feels compacted in several spots. Thanks. Um, SV Contigo, this is a great question. Um, there really are no downfalls to, to aerating a lawn in the, in the spring. But the only concern that I have is going to be if you put down a springtime pre-emergent. Because you got to remember, when we put down the, the prodiamine in early spring, that application is going to provide us about three to six months of efficacy, depending on how much we applied in that single time. And because of that, my biggest concern, especially right now, considering that I'm two months after, not even two months after my application, and I decided to aerate, I'd be breaking that barrier and I'd be allowing crabgrass to come in. Now, if you do, if you do want to aerate in the spring, keep in mind it's not going to affect the lawn detrimentally in any way, shape, or form. But it is going to, but you are going to have to compromise, being that you are going to break that pre-emergent barrier you established in order to aerate the ground. So honestly, if you were to ask me, when in doubt, don't do it. Just focus on proper mowing and fertilization throughout the year using the using, you know, products like Melorganite and the next biostimulant pack and the soil activator pack, all of that stuff. Focus on doing that and then with time, I guarantee you that lawn might start to gradually get thicker. Um, Anthony J. Barton, I hope tonight we're going to do an all-nighter. Will you be lighting a fire and show us how to mow your grass like last week? Um, Anthony, I don't think I'm going to be doing an all-nighter, but maybe lighting a fire would be a good idea. But based on yeah, my past experience with doing that, I don't want to bore all you guys while building a fire. So we'll have to figure that out. All right, let's see. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little stuttery tonight. I don't know why. <laughs> it's one of the detriments to having ADD. <sighs> Let 
where are we at here in the chat? Boiler up, Jake. Went through some of the turf program in the summers while getting my engineering degree. Awesome, dude. That's awesome. Um, Jake, if you could use one of the next products and only one, what would it be? RGS. Hands down, RGS. Because RGS is what the spotlight shines on. RGS is what stimulates all of that root growth that we know and love. So I hope that answers your question. All right. Jake needs an X Mark Star S. Saw BLMs. What do you think about the stars from. Dude, you know, it's funny that you bring that up, Andy. I was actually at one of my local dealers this week, and I did notice the, the X Mark Star S 36 and the X Mark 52. And my dad was even telling me, dude, you know, this looks like a good mower. If it's in a good price range, we should get it for the business. Why not? Because having a 36. Um, having a 36 um, X Mark Starus would be really good for me because I do a lot of gated backyards, which I'm not a fan of, but it's money, so I can't complain. Um, I wish I I wish I had it, and it would fit in my trailer, no problem. Mm. All right, uh, Plato Dimitriadis. Um, do you have any siblings and are they interested in your grassology? Yes, I have two younger sisters and I can tell you that in no way, shape or form are they interested in my grassology as much as I am. They just poke fun at it, but you know, they're siblings, that's what they do. Um, putting in new sidewalks soon, we'll have to tear up some yard. Thoughts on how to get it back to domination? Um, well... Josh, I don't know the specifics on your situation. Like, I don't know when you're ripping it up, but your best bet, like I said, would be to work on the soil, uh, continue using products like the next Air Rate, the next RGS, basically the whole biostimulant pack in conjunction with products like Melorganite or products that are close to it. And then in conjunction with that, just keep mowing like normal, especially if you have a rhizomatous grass like um, Kentucky Bluegrass, because one of the things that frequent mowing will do is it'll start to stimulate more uh, rhizomatous and more lateral growth so that any any bare spots, they'll be able to fill in gradually over time. And then whatever doesn't fill in, as I always say, you can fill in the gaps by doing some fall seeding. That's what I recommend. <clears throat> Jake, do you do any youth talks about entrepreneurship and work ethic it seems like you might be able to reach some of your peers that way too um hop hops i'm glad you asked that i don't do it i don't do it out for a living or side hustle or anything i mean i have gotten up and spoken at some events like if you've been watching the videos i i did it at um i did it back at at gie in october uh for real green systems i got up there told my story and I also did it uh, back in February when I went to Loncology. I got up on stage and I was able to give a talk and, you know, tell my social media story, how I got into the industry in the first place, um, and what I've learned and what, you know, what's the, what's the best advice I can give to people based on that knowledge I've obtained over the years. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I love it. Come on, Jake, do it. Build a fire. You know what? We, we probably will. All right? Let's see how long this goes first. You guys are asking some good questions. Brian's lawn maintenance seems to be liking his 52 stars. Yeah, I got to catch up on his videos, man. I've been so busy with school and whatnot. Like, I remember telling you guys, like, the reason I have this giant American flag here is because I had to work on a history project. So that's what that's all about back here. Just finish that, ease that as always. Now we can start, you know. <laughs> now I can start catching up on my YouTube videos. Um, David Williams, what's up, brother? How you doing? Welcome to the show. Um, Anthony J. Barton, maybe lead in the water. Man, I don't know what it is. I just can't enunciate tonight. <laughs> Do you know? Do you know how much the 30-inch Starus costs? Um, not off the top of my head, Calvin. Eric Von Whittle, two sisters, you poor young man. Yeah, man, I mean, it's a struggle every day, but 
at the end of the day, we love each other. We support each other. So I can't complain. Um, when Mila runs out, what would be a good macro fertilizer for the spreader? Already running next products, Detroit, Michigan. Um, there are some clones you can get out there. There's going to be one I'm actually going to be uh, featuring in tomorrow's video where I'm going to be doing round two of the LCN lawn restoration. So stay tuned for that coming up. I'm going to be talking about an, an alternative for Melorganite. I think that's going to be kind of cool. And then in conjunction with that, another great product is going to be the 1801 Green Punch. Now keep in mind, um, if you are going to use that product, um, make sure that if it's your first time around using it, number one, you use a hose end sprayer like I mentioned in all the videos. And number two, just make sure that um, make sure that you have a, you have as much water diluting that stuff as possible. Because if you apply that using a backpack and you put too much in the tank, you can you can burn things because of the high nitrogen content. So really, if you're a beginner, probably not the best option. But as you grow and as you advance further into your lawn care program, uh, Green Punch would be a great product to venture into, especially as, especially as you're venturing into your lawn care program and you're learning things like you're, you're diving deeper into the science of the soil and you want to figure out, you know, what can I do to correct things? Like, for instance, taking down the amount of nitrogen. Green Punch does just that. In fact, it gives you the same results as Melorganite while putting down less nitrogen, and it also gives you the benefit of the humic and the sea kelp. So I hope that answered your question. Um, Greg Win Winchester, that's how I pronounce your name. I hope it answered your question um, very clear and to the point. Kelvin, sorry, I just answered that one. Dan Ledman, Jake, do you plan to join Oyen? <laughs> Jake, do you plan to join Alan in Florida for a career? Um, that's a good question. Alan's actually in here right now. Um, by the way, what's up, brother? I saw your chat popping up. Um, maybe, depending on where we go with things, but we'll see. Um, Josh Smith, Jake, I'm seeing over the past two years, I have a lot of grass rhizome runners all over the place going over sidewalks and onto the road. Thoughts on how to deal with this? Depends on the type of grass it is, Josh. If it's your regular grass, like based on where you are, I really don't know. Where are you located, John Smith? You're going to have to tell me that. Um, all right, John Platts. I have been finding it hard to pull the trigger on blanket weed, <clears throat> blanket spray weed control, but I really need it. Does it, does it just kind of transition over time, or does it look like crap for a while? Um, this is a good question. So, John Platts, if you're looking to do a blanket uh, weed control, um. I'm assuming that you're talking about the R the RTS, the ready to spray hose end sprayer that you could get at the store. Um, all you have to do is just read the read the label. For example, it covers 5,000 square feet and cover it evenly. That's what I would do. And as far as the results, it takes time to see it. I'd say about a good three weeks to a month. That's the that's the average for weed controls. All right, let's see here. <clears throat> what up, Jake? Just got here. My neighbor on both sides of me have dandelions. I just threw down my preventative, but I'm seeing lions, um, lions because of my neighbors. Yeah. In fact, I'm actually going to be talking about that in a video coming up here sometime in the future called how to spray weeds in the lawn, because I actually did a video on this a couple years ago, but you know, now that I'm more educated now compared to then, I want to go ahead and touch on some more topics. And I'm, I'm going to do that in a whole nother video where I talk all about, where I talk all about, um, you know, how to, how to treat weeds smartly, if you will. So stay tuned for that coming up. <clears throat> have you ever heard of Higher Bricks Fertilizer, Braiding 8-4? Yes, I have. Pete Denny with GCI Turf talks about that stuff all the time and I'm I've, I've been watching his stuff a lot and based on what I'm hearing it's a good fertilizer it's a good brand to go with especially if you're gardening and you're trying to grow good lawn because they just make products all around kind of like the Green County folks do but they have their own line of granular stuff so we'll have to see I mean they've been uh, I've seen them like in a couple posts on Instagram maybe we'll see if that leads anywhere I'm not really sure but uh, 
I'm sure it will. Um, a fire. I have the AC on down here. <laughs> That's funny. Andy's Lawn Care and Outdoor Adventures. At a Polish flag. It's Poland's Constitution Day. <laughs> I love that. You know what? I'll have to do that. In fact, this will probably be like... I'll just have to leave this here because this just looks so sick. I'm serious. It does. And what's funny is the hooks here are like perfectly separated so that the flag can just rest in between them. And originally, like I said, the reason I put this up here was for a project. So I think if I decide to shoot down here in the future again, which I probably will depending on how the weather is, I'm probably just going to shoot in here. I'm just going to leave that flag up there because why not, right? All right, let's see what we got here. Milo should be open. Milo should open more plants in bigger cities. Yeah, I agree with that. Zachary Jordan, what's up, brother? How you doing? Welcome to the show. Biostimulants a little expensive for me. Yeah, but David Williams, if you have a small yard or a big yard, it, re it really depends on the situation. Um, no matter what qu qu quantity you buy, it ends up being cheaper in the long term because you don't have to buy as much of it. Um, after every application. In fact, if you have a small lawn, you can get away with one biostimulant pack for like a year or two, depending on how much you want to apply. Mm -hmm. How important are secondary nutrients and trace nutrients for those little grass blades? Um, very important because they help improve the overall performance of the macronutrients. So if you're low on micronutrients, um, I recommend that you compensate for that as soon as you can. And a great product for that would be the 002 microgreen from the next Green County line. And the reason I say that is because that product contains a little bit of potassium, to about 2%. And you also get the benefit of getting a good dose of the micros. And by putting all those micros down, they're going to help fill in the gaps and help the, my, help the macros perform better, if you will. You need a great theme song to do intro into Lawn Fires like John Perry does. You know what? I'll have to, I'll have to collaborate with him because we're going to be doing a show here very soon. He's going to be coming to town. I don't know when. I don't have any dates yet. But I just thought I'd tell you ahead of time that John and I are going to get together and do an episode of Lawn Fires. I don't know when it's going to be, but based on what I'm hearing, it's going to be sometime this summer. And maybe while he's here... I can get him to make a catchy jingle for the show. We'll have to see. Um, RV not one one one. Hi Jake. Uh, <clears throat> can you let me know? I applied corn gluten pre-emergent back on March thirtieth. Then I applied Scott's weed and feed. Question. The question now is: Do I still need to apply Scott's Holtz crabgrass preventer also? Well. Considering the fact that what you put down is classified as a pre-emergent, I wouldn't worry about putting down any other products right now because of the fact that um, my biggest concern right now would be max maximums, right? You don't want to exceed a maximum after a certain amount of time. Now, if you want to put down the Holtz uh, later on during the year, who am I to stop you? Go ahead and do it. But I, I really wouldn't recommend it because you're not going to get as much control out of it as you would if you applied it earlier. Um, any... And that's okay because if you did get down that pre-emergent, the corn gluten, whatever it is, I'm sure it'll work just fine. And if you do have any crabgrass escapees, you can use the, you can use the the um, you can use the WDG or no the dry flowable Concorac from DoMyOwn.com. That'll be just fine for treating any of the. That'll be just fine for treating any of the escaping crabgrass post-emergently. Greg Winchester. Thanks, Jake. You were on point with the answer. Keep it up. No problem, Greg. Glad I can help you. Josh Smith. Jake, I'm in upstate New York and have KBG, rye, and turf type tall fescue. All right. Let me let me make sure I get back up here. Um. Oh, so bluegrass. Yeah, new, very notorious for shooting out, um, for shooting out little little runners. Not not as you know, not as vigorous as St. Augustine, but they do it here and there. And as far as how to take care of it, just keep edging like normal and they'll go away. Hang on a second. All right. 
Let's see what we got here. Will an alternative to Milo be widely available, says Plato Demetriotis. Um, not that I know of. I don't know how widely available they are because the more alternatives we tell you about, the faster they sell out. I mean, I don't want to sound like a jerk or anything, but that's the tr that's the cold hard truth about it. Um, it depends on how many there there are, really. So I can't give you a, a definite answer. Hop hops. I bought bland. I bought Blindside. But I've been nervous about applying it. I hear it's bad for nutsedge, though. Might add a little nutsedge killer in the mix. Um, Hot Pops, I've never used wine side, but from what I hear, it gives you a really fast, it gives you a really fast, um, strong kill right out of the gate. So about, with, with literally within a week, you'll get a strong kill on your weeds. Now, as far as mixing the sedge killer with it, I, I probably wouldn't worry about it because the blind side does control the sedges. Have you seen the purely organic fertilizer at Home Depot? Is Zachary Jordan? No, I haven't, buddy. I'll have to look. I'll have to look a little harder the next time I'm there. Hmm. I still think an Allen. <laughs> that's great. I still think Allen and Silverback should arm wrestle. You know what? We'll have to make that happen here. I think that'd be interesting. Oh, glory! That's right, Eric. You got it. Andy's Lawn Care and Outdoor Adventures. God run. See you next week. Thank you for tuning in, brother. I really appreciate it. Um, hop hops. Milo should open a plant in Pennsylvania or somewhere. They could do coal mining, mining to get that extra carbon iron. Good idea. Um, Anthony J. Barton, what do you recommend for a post-herbicide? Now, it's a good question because there's a lot of them, right? Um, now, for any beginner, I recommend any over-the-counter, and this really goes for anybody. I recommend any over-the-counter weed control that you can find. Just make sure that it contains the active ingredients you need in order to control the weeds in your lawn. Like, for instance, if you have... Broadleaf weeds in your lawn, 240, dicamba, triclopyr, those are the ingredients you want to look for. Or if you're dealing with more grassy weeds, you want to make sure that you have concorac in there, especially if you're dealing with uh, concorac and foxtail, that'll be a good idea. But really, what I recommend is this three-way product from Bayer Advance because they have a little bit of everything. They allow you to control both the grassy and the broadleaf weeds. And because it is an over-the-counter product, it's not that high in concentration, so it's more of a beginner level product. So if you do go a little over the top with it, you're not really going to damage anything as you would if you were to use a professional top quality weed control like Blindside or, um, there, there's a bunch of them, but I, I'm not going to name them because I, I personally can't name them off the top of my head, but I'm, I'm sure you get the idea. Just go to the, go to the store and get whatever you can find that contains active ingredients, 240, dicamba, and concorac. That'll take care of a lot of the weeds that we're dealing, especially if you live in a cool season zone like I do. Jake, talk to John Perry. The big box store should sell the next products. He would make millions. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He, he would, but... He's already selling them through Pete and Allen, so I think that's enough for him. Lambert1702, what's up, man? Um, glad you can make it. Um, Nick Schneider, how many customers do you have this year? I have about... I have about five or six right now, and I'm sure as we go through the summer that'll climb up to 10 to 12 and with a little bit of handouts I'm going to be doing hopefully I'll be able to double that to at least 24. Jake do you ship out lawn products? No I don't. Not yet. Um, Chase Weekly what's up man how you doing? Zachary Jordan Silverback does the pest management. <laughs> yep that's right. Um, Brian Nowell, I have tons of poetry that came in this year. Um, I don't recall seeing it last year. Is there any selective herbicides to kill just the poetry or do I need to round up the 30k th th square feet? 
One second, sorry. Excuse me. Okay, so to answer your question, Brian, and I've actually answered this in a couple of my videos, I don't know of any products on the market for homeowners that will control um, the POA selectively. Now, I have heard people say that if you're dealing with the annual, um, which is with the seed heads, the annual the annual um, bluegrass, the POA annua, um, I hear, I hear people saying you can use tenacity on it, but because I have no personal experience, I can't recommend that to you. And it's not on the label, and label is lost, so I don't want to take a risk and do that. But anyway, uh, to answer your question, I don't know of any selective herbicides in the market that will take care of it. Your best bet is to glyphosate it. Now, if you want to just let it go, that's fine, because one, as we progress into the... As we progress into the late spring, early to mid summer time frame, that's when it's going to start getting hot and dry. And at that point, the trivialis isn't going to be able to handle it, and it's just going to it's just going to die off. And the bluegrass that you have is going to come in and come back in and take over. So I'm not really worried about it, especially since I did a little bit of digging where I have it. I have a good amount of bluegrass in there that's actually inter, that's actually intertwined with it. So I'm sure that as time goes on, the temperatures get warmer, that will slowly start to dissolve and I won't have to worry about it as, as much as I do right now. But uh, Brian no will to answer your question, um, reseed, I would definitely do that. Now make sure you check the label. If you do decide to use glyphosate, that's fine, but make sure that you check the label so that you do not so that you don't seed too early and the herbicide um, the herbicide still resides in there and that possibly hurts your seed. So make sure that you check ahead of time, make sure the label's fine, and then plan your seeding accordingly. Josh Smith, I have to look for Milo in January to stockpile it since it's been out the past two growing seasons and the seasons haven't even started. Um, yeah, I would do that if you can do it. Plateau Demetriatus. I have been using Milo only for the longest time, and it's only the NP, not the K. Should I put some K down? Um, Plateau Dimitri, um, I would definitely do that because you, you want to make sure that you have K if you haven't been applying it, uh, which is why I recommend products like the O2 Microgreen or the 005 Next Aerate product because they both have a good amount of, of potassium in there. And the reason you want to have the potassium is because the potassium is what builds cell structure in the plant and helps make it more immune to common problems and diseases that we run into throughout the year. So you want to make sure that you put down potassium if you haven't already in conjunction with your Milo apps. Jake Allen says you use his steel. Oh yeah, I, I, I was listening to this the other day. Hot Pops, Jake, Alan says you used to steal his sprinkler heads. Do you have any fun stories about taking them or other fun stories about Alan as a young man? Um, that's a good question. Now, I personally don't remember. Like, right after I, right after I heard that, I, was, I, I literally went to Silverback and I asked him, I'm like, Dad, did I used to do that? Because, I don't know, I guess, I guess it's psychology, right? My brain wasn't fully developed at that point. And because of that, I couldn't really, I can't really remember. I can't recall anything specifically. So I don't really have any stories. But all, all I can say is, I do remember when I, I do remember I used to, you know, talk to Al about how we should put an irrigation system in, and then I would draw up blueprints. I wish I had, I wish I still had them. If I did, I'd show them to you. But uh, yeah, we, <laughs> it was a lot of fun when I was young. Um,. What else the what would it, what would be the opposite of do my own do somebody <laughs> that's funny mm. Get comfortable here The real Steve Frederick. What up, Jake? Um, do you have much issue with nut sedge? Where do you have many issues with nut sedge where you're at? I'm in Louisville, and it's been a problem the last two seasons. Um, the real Steve Frederick. Yes, I have had problems with it. Now, not in my lawn, but 
in a lot of my customer lawns where we often have swales and trenches between the houses where water just accumulates from heavy rains, that's where we see a lot of the water grass. Now, as far as how to treat it, um, any sedge product that you can get over the counter should take care of it. Or again, you can go to do my own and pick up the uh, sedge hammer. And as far as mix rates, mix according to label directions. Uh, I believe it's per gallon and you should be fine. Brian Noel, follow up, but the polo will show up again next year, even though the heat kills it this year. Um, right, the roots will still be there, I think, and it'll only spread next year. Well, I don't know if it'll spread, Brian, but it'll definitely pop up in the same areas where you're seeing it. Um, what I'm actually going to try and do as an experiment on my lawn this year is I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to chemically kill it out. Uh, so to speak, which I probably will in the future, but just not now. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to I'm trying to culturally outcompete it, and the way I'm doing that is I'm mowing more frequently. I'm mowing lower than normal, uh, stimulating the lateral growth on the the bluegrass to grow into those areas, and I'm fertilizing monthly with the next products and the malorganite and things like that. And then once we get to fall, I'm gonna go really hard with overseeding because the idea being is that if I'm going to choke something out I need to make sure that my lawn is as thick as possible and also by doing this this will solve about another 80 90 percent of the problems you have in the lawn anyway so when in doubt aerate and overseed in the fall to add some new cultivars in there and increase the overall density of the turf Milo scented candles everybody's been asking me about that you know what I I personally <laughs> I personally think that would be cool. I, I could imagine that. Like, my dad would probably be like, what's that smell? But I'd be like, dude, it smells great. Are you going to be doing mulch installs this year, says Nick Schneider. Um, I don't think so. Don't have the equipment for it yet. Anthony J. Barton. I am looking for something to kill the roots first and then plant, and then the plant like revolver. Um, will you be writing a book for students to learn from? Mm, maybe someday, Anthony. Not not at the moment, but we'll have to we'll have to focus on growing this reach first, and then maybe I'll I'll have to see. I don't know yet, but that's that's in the future. Um, Mike. Anthony J. Barton, Jake. Do you sleep well at night knowing that when you wake up, there might be weeds? <laughs> oh, man, dude. Anthony? What's up? Here, I got you a shake. Awesome. Are you done with your show? Just about. No creases. No creases. I was really late tonight. You were? Uh, yeah. We took two show. straws. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, now you do. <laughs> Is Olivia down here? Yeah, where were you? The gym. Olivia. Here, I'm sort of back at the gym. Staying big. <laughs> Alright, a couple more questions and then we're going to get out of here because I want to try and get to bed early because I got I got three different projects I got to, I got to shoot tomorrow for the channel, so... I want to start a little early. <laughs> but yeah, Anthony, do I sleep well at night knowing there might be weeds in the lawn? Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Depends on the mood I'm in. But knowing that I have the knowledge I have today and that I could treat it no problem, it really doesn't bother me that much. Mm. If yes on granular potassium, is it expensive? Um, I don't really know. I don't know personally, Plateau. I've never used it, but I'll have to I'll have to do some research and get back to you on that. All right, I'll take a couple more questions and then I'm gonna go ahead and get off here, uh, so I can get to bed for tomorrow morning. Um, thanks for the help, Jake. I think the trip will just get worse. Overseeded last two falls, my lawn is thick. 
stuff is nasty and it's taking over the lawn. Plan on Roundup and Seed. Um, yeah, Brian, either way, whatever you do should be fine. Who am I to tell you not to do that? Just make sure that you're willing to put in the work and the time. With all the homeless people in California, there should be no sh not, no shortage for Milo. <laughs> it's funny. John Plants. The city did some grass planting in the back of my yard when they did some drainage work. It grows crazy fast and the blades are super wide. Is there a difference between field grass and K31? Um, I'm not sure, John Platts. I don't know what you mean by field grass because that can mean so many different things. But all I know is that Kentucky 31 compared to common turf types that we have up here in the north is going to mirror the image of a tall fescue lawn. Really what it is is it's a, it's a, it's a bluegrass lawn that's meant to mirror the overall image and appearance of a tall fescue lawn, albeit not as dark. But that's what K31 is, and that's why it's a little different. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and end the show right here. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more episodes coming up on the weekly in the future. And also, subscribe for the two videos I got coming out this weekend where I'm going to be showing you one, the LCN Lawn Restoration Step 2, as well as Step 2 for the next Step Liquid Lawn Care Program we're doing in the front, and then the test plot coming sometime later this week. So with that, I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. If I don't see you guys next time, you're going to be dominated, bro. See you later.